Hello, good morning everyone and thank you very much for joining uh, our webinar. Today we are going to talk about the endocrowns as a reliable alternative to restore endotreated teeth, especially the molar. So let's get started. So as an introduction, uh, traditionally the endotreated teeth given always a post and core and then crown in order to protect it. So why? Because we have still now we have this kind of concept that whenever you do endo treatment, uh, better to protect this tooth after the treatment with the crown. Why? In order to restore the function and the aesthetic of the tooth. But with the recent development in the dental materials and dental adhesive, the restoration of endo treated teeth became simpler, more economical, it means cheaper and biocompatible. So, what is endo crown? Endo crown is an only restoration on endo treated teeth. It's more conservative than traditional post and core system. Uses adhesive resin with a monoplock technique. So the concept is to engage the large bubble chamber of a root treated molar teeth with ceramic edge restoration, which provides cuspal coverage. So uh, indications, indications when we can use the endo crowns. First, it should be done on a successful root canal treated teeth, the molars. And whenever we have an excessive loss of coronal dental tissue and limited interoclusal space or the crown height is short. Molars with operated, short, delacerated or fragile roots. Molars with the calcified canals, in this case also we can consider the endocrown. So what are the cont contraindications? First, the depth of the bubble chamber should be at least 3 mm in order to provide a good retention and resistance, resistance for the endocrown. Cervical margin should be not less than 1 mm wide and I prefer always to be 2 mm and above. Adhesion cannot be assured. In this case, don't go for endocrown. And whatever the patient is having parafunctional habits, don't go for, for it till you treat and eliminate this habit. So the advantages. First, uh, it's minimally invasive preparation, uh, maximum tissue bioconservation, and considered as the gold standard for restoring the endotreated teeth, especially the molars. So it can be used whenever we have a limited interoclusal space. At that time, we cannot consider doing the full veneer crowns. And also can be used in a short clinical crown teeth. And the use of one single material for the core and overlay provides ergonomics advantage. A simpler execution for the dental technician, simple to be done by the, by the dental technician, and it will reduce the lab cost, and it will reduce the chair side time and the treatment duration on the dental chair. Disadvantage is has, it has a very minimal disadvantage. First, the risk of debonding, but it's okay. Once it's debonded, then we, it is locked, then we can resubmit it again if it's happened. Rarely it will be happened. Uh, and root fracture, in some rare cases, it can, it can fracture the root, but it's not like the post on core. Limitation may be restricted to the ceramic materials, which must be acid etchable ceramic like Empress Emacs or Zirconia. So how about longevity and effectiveness? Depends on many factors like case selection, parafunctional habits such as proxism, correct preparation, the selection of a most suitable restorative materials, and the choice of bonding materials. Endocrown fits perfectly with the concept of biointegration and can serve as a conservative and aesthetic restorative option for endoposterior teeth, especially the molar. So endocrown reduces the need for conventional full coverage crown, full veneer crowns with extensively cuspal loss, and remaining two structures are preserved leads to less destruction of health healthy dental tissues and able to provide a good aesthetic. In 2001, uh, Mr. Hugh reported that the configuration of the papal walls of endocrown uh, preparation creates a macromechanical retention and adhesive cementation creates a micro retention that results in higher longevity and effectiveness of the endocrown. Ten years of clinical study by Bill Flame et al. 2017 Evaluated 99 lithium desilicate endocrine and con concluded that proper adhesive techniques and cementation enhance the longevity of the restoration.
Another prospective study by Zoe Utah 2018 evaluated the clinical performance of a CAD CAM computer aid device, computer aid manufacturer fabricated monolithic zirconia molar endocrowns with extensively cuspal loss in a, up to three years. Favorable outcomes was achieved with a several rate of 99.3% to 100%. However, higher failure rate were reported on premolars compared to molars based on the clinical studies by Blendel et al. 2005, Otto T. and Monoran WH 2005, 15. Premolars have a small adhesive bonding surface compared to molars, and this factor might contribute to the loss of adhesion. This is why we always recommend to use the endocrine for molar. However, incisors and premolars in the crown require further clinical evaluation studies in order to exhibit comparable survival rates, good preparation design, proper selection of restorative materials, and accurate adhesion bonding techniques are the key factors for the long-term success of endocrine restoration. So if you want to compare between the endocrine and the post core system, based on clinical studies, if clinical studies selected, uh, from the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry, which one, uh, which is this one, uh, one of the pioneer uh, uh, journals in prosthodontics, uh, they found uh, by Gober and uh, Country Post that the survival rate for molars in regards to endocrine was 90% from six months up to 10 years. And the same thing similarly for the post core. Survival rate for the premolars was 68% at 55 months and 75% at 10 years. Uh, wherever it was 95% for the postum core. So it has a higher rate uh, and good prognosis, better prognosis for postum core, whatever it's doing on the premolars. Uh, failure modes, 53% uh, loss of retention, 14% peridontitis, 14% uh, chipping of the endocrine, where uh, for postum core it was 53% for the crown fracture, 23% for vertical root fracture and 19% irreversible pulpitis. So as a conclusion for this study, endocrines are an excellent treatment solution for extensively damaged endotreated teeth in short, medium, and long terms, less invasive, more conservative. So what are the methods need to be done? So first, we, as we know, we need to take the proper history, medical history, dental history, do a proper examination, intraoral examination, extraoral examination, then we reach to the problem list and then we we get the diagnosis, then we plan for the treatment. So then we treat the tooth endodontically, we do endo treatment, timber restoration to close the axis cavity and primary impression using alginate or putty method and pour the primary cast, the opposite arch down, do the stone model, wax up on the primary cast for the putty index fabrication and on the next visit, remove the timber restoration and clean the axis cavity. So how we do the preparation for the endocrown? So this one we call the butt joint preparation or the cervical uh, cervical sidewalk. Uh, first, we do a closer reduction. The, the goal in preparation is to achieve an overall reduction in the height of the occlusal surface of at least 2 mm to provide a proper thickness for the endocrown in the axial direction. This reduction can be achieved by drilling 2 mm deep Grooves as a guide. Then we use a green diamond wheel burr to reduce the occlusal surface. The burr is oriented along the major axis of the tooth, barrel to the long axis of the tooth, and held barrel to the uh, sorry, uh, held barrel to the occlusal plane to reduce the flattened the uh, and we flatten the occlusal surface. Occlusal height reduction is essential for a full. Caspal coverage thus provide resistant retention and enhance the fracture resistance. So its shape allows control of the orientation of the reduction and ensures a flat surface which determines the position of the cervical margin or cervical sidewalk or the pot joint. Enamel walls less than 2 mm thick should be removed because it's going to be not supported. It's easy to get broken, so better, better to remove it. So why butt joint preparation? Uh, D. Monk in 2003 concluded that the resin bonded to enamel protected the resin dentin bond against water degradation. Therefore, flat top preparations such as a pot joint or cervical sidewalk 
produce a wide uniform surface area for bonding and a low bitter uh, adhesion to enamel rim. But we need to make sure to have a remaining crown portion to place a rubber dam clamp because isolation around the endocrine preparation is the most important parameter and can be achieved using a rubber dam for optimal bonding protocol. Axle preparation, this step primarily involves eliminating of any undercuts in the axle's cavity. So here we use a cylindrical conical green diamond burr with a total occlusal convergence of seven degrees is used to make the coronal pulp chamber and endodontic axis cavity continuous. So do we need to prepare a furrow for the endocrine? Actually, in a new in vitro study by Inhorn uh, in 2019, <coughs> focus on the extracted molar teeth and to investigate the effect of no furrow 1.0 mm and 2.0 mm furrow height towards the feathered strength of the endocrine. So here we are talking about the height of the furrow. So this study revealed that the higher failure load resistance was found in the furrow containing endocrine compared to without furrow endocrine. So we don't prefer to have a furrow effect for whatever we want to fabricate an endocrine. Polishing the cervical uh, band, the burr used in this step has the same taper as the one used in the axial preparation, but a larger diameter and finer particle size uh, should be used. It should be guided uh, around the entire surface of the cervical band to remove the micro irregularities and produce a flat polished surface. The margin line should appear as a, a regular line with a sharp edge. So this is the picture before and after. All the irregularities has been removed. After the polishing, preparation of the cavity floor, uh, the entrance of the to the bubble canal is open. Gutenberg uh, is removed to the depth not exceeding two mm to take advantage of the saddle-like anatomy, saddle-like anatomy of the cavity floor. This is why uh, to improve the retention resistance for the endocrine. This should be done with the non-abrasive instruments to maintain the integrity of the canals entrance. No drilling of the dentin is carried out. Uh, after that, we clean up the bulb chamber using an ultrasonic scaler, clean the floor and wall of the bulb chamber thoroughly. Then we seal the dentin. Actually, in Maine in 2005 uh, and against it in 2016, reported that immediate dentin sealing, immediate dentin sealing IDS technique enhances stable hybrid layer and improved dentin bone strength fewer gaps formation, and decreased bacterial, uh, decreased bacterial leakage. So IDS is a procedure where the dentin bonding agent is applied to freshly cut dentin and polymerize before making the impression. Here we're talking about the secondary impression or intraoral scanning for the CAD CAM machine. So what is IDS? IDS is a procedure where a dentin bonding agent is applied to freshly cut dentin and polymerize before making an impression or intraoral scanning. Clinical protocol for IDS is the use of the itch and rinse system where itching uh, should extend slightly over enamel to promote the conditioning of the entire dentin surface. The application of phosphoric acid, 35% to 37%, will enhance the dentin surface. Energy will remove the smear layer and promote demineralization of surface hydroxyapatite uh, crystals. After that, we take the secondary impression using a double wash impression technique or the Schellen, uh, Schellenberg technique. And here we prefer to use the additional silicone uh, putty with a light body um, to get the, uh, the secondary impression. Uh, for the opposite arch, the stone cast from the primary impression can be used. Then we, we tumberize the, the tooth using the tumbery crown. Fabricate the endocrine in the lab, then um, and using indirect restor restoration using composite resin like material Solidex, Targress, or Articus, or etc. Or we can use the machine aided computer aided device, computer aided manufacturer, or or a crown press technique. Material like feldspar, ceramic, uh, polycrystalline, zirconium dioxide, particle filled glass, composite resin, inter uh, penetrating phase composite. After it's already fabricated in the, uh, in the lab, the lab, he will send us the, the crown, then we need to issue the endocrine. So we remove the temporary crown, clean up the tooth, uh, check the fit of the endocrine. We do etching and bonding, of course, 
with the etching, if it's the ceramic, we need to use the uh, hydrofluoric acid, 20% for 10 seconds. Then we wash, then we dry uh, on the two surface. We apply, uh, and uh, then we wash, then we dry, uh, then we wash, then we dry. Dry. Then after that, we apply the saline cobbling agent. Then take the surface of the endocrown. Uh, after uh, then, of course, we need to to itch the dental surface, uh, dental surface of the tooth. Itch it with a um, phosphoric acid, 35 to 37 percent. Then we wash. Then we dry. Then we apply the bonding agent. Then we um, after that we use the uh, resin cement to cement the endocrown into its place. Uh, we prefer to use the, uh, the double cure uh, uh, resin cement or the self cure resin cement uh, to cement the endocrown until it's placed. Uh, then we check the occlusion and we make sure you don't ask the patient to bite hardly on the endocrown, otherwise, maybe it can get fractured. And then we check the occlusion in the dynamic phase and also in the static phase. So, these are the key areas for the endocrown design. Uh, as we see here, no, one is the cervical sidewalk, or we call it the butt joint, and number two is the endodontic excess cavity, and number three is the bulb chamber, and number four is the root canal inlet. Uh, five here, we can see how is the subtle uh, shaped effect of the bubble floor should be to, to increase the retention and the resistance of the endocrine. And number two, actually, number three and number four constitute something we call cameral cavity. Cameral cavity. And as we said, the bubble, the, the bulb chamber should be at least of a height of 3 mm uh, for the endo crown. So this is a case report of a patient who is 29-year-old female patient. Her chief complained that she wants to get a restoration after treated by an endodontist last week. She told that she is going to use an orthodontic after the endo. Uh, after the restoration. So patient had no history of hypertension, uh, had diabetic, allergic reaction, uh, blood abnormality. So she's medically fit. Extra oral examination, there is no abnormalities detected. Intra oral examination, uh, the patient was having a good oral hygiene. Uh, then tumor restoration was done on the occlusal extension to the buccal pit, proximal distal, and some lingual in good condition without any leakage seen. Biting test, done and percussion test also done showing negative reaction no sign of tooth movements or mobility and normal periodontia so this is the pre-op picture and this is how it looks on the x-ray after the end of treatment so the treatment plan was designed and procedures done first a wax up was made and impression by butty was done to get the elastomer matrix for tumor restoration Endocrine preparation was done by wheel diamond burr, taking the coronal part of the tooth structures until the suprajugal margin. Gutta burka was taken by flat taper diamond burr 1 mm under orifice. Bulb chamber preparation was also made by taper diamond burr, shaping the bulb chamber divergent coronally between 5 degrees to 10 degrees of the tooth axis. Smart dental replacement was applied on the bulb chamber as a base. So this is how it looks before and this is how it looks after the preparation. Uh, after the preparation finished, impression was taken using a double impression technique. Meanwhile, maxillary teeth were impressed uh, by alginate and castled by dental stone. Tumbery crown by best acrylic composite was applied to the elastomer matrix and blazed to the tooth 36. The excess materials were taken using excavator. Working model model was prepared for indirect composite into crown making application of separator was given to all surface of prepared 236 and proximal surface of 237 and 35 which has a proximal contact to 36 so wear antagonist teeth for several seconds application of sdr and dense fly was made in tooth timber until the tooth preparation margin and light cured to create the base this is the, how we fabricate the endocrown using the indirect composite material. Uh, as we see in number A, the separator application, then from B to D, dentin base, uh, dentin shade the application, layer by layer build out the core. And uh, E, we can see application of the sectional matrix of the distal area of the tooth and application of composite enamel shade. In F picture, we can see application of the sectional matrix on the mesial area of the tooth 
and she is sculpting the or carving the buccal and lingual wall uh, and then uh, carving the occlusal anatomy of the of the tooth on uh, her edge. So the results of composite intercranial restoration, we can see the occlusal view, buccal view, and lingual view, an ABC picture. Glycerin application also was applied as an oxygen barrier gel. Relationship of the crown height and occlusion with the antagonist tooth was done. Relationship of the crown height and occlusion with the antagonist tooth um, and endocrown final restoration on G. Adhesive step on endocrown acid etching the uh, done on the tabular surface or the tissue surface of the endocrown, then wash off with the water, syringe, and dry it off. Application of bonding agent, light curing of bonding agent, and application of saline, saline coupling agent to improve the bonding. Adhesive step on 236 acid etching uh, the tooth. Acid etch is wash off with the water, syringe, and dry it off to the moist uh, state. Application of the bonding agent, light curing the bonding agent, and we apply the seal tape to the proximal area of the adjacent teeth in order to protect it. And this is the post endocrine cementation picture, how it looks like. Clinical assessment done. Uh, here we see preoperative occlusal view, an A, and then preoperative uh, buccal view. And C picture, we see occlusal view of one week follow up after composite endocrine insertion on 236. A buckle view of one week follow up after a composite intercrown insertion on two three six. And actually here the the isolation isolation I always recommend to do the isolation under the, the rubber dam under the rubber dam application. Okay, but if you feel kind of like I don't know what to say maybe lazy you go for the cotton isolation which I don't recommend actually. So this is a case for endocrown case for severely. Uh, damaged lower seven for 29 years old patient. This is a patient on tooth uh, uh, four seven, tooth four seven, uh, severely broken down tooth and the coronal part, and we can see some uh, gingival growth in the distal part. Gingivectomy has been done. Uh, injury, uh, uh, injury treatment also done. Base uh, has been placed. Uh, uh, the base material. Uh, has been placed on the orifices. Preparation of the for the endocrine has been done, and we can see that the sidewalk, the cervical cervical sidewalk, has more than two mm uh, thickness, and the bulb chamber uh, depth is having more than three mm uh, uh, depth. And this is the endocrine after fabrication. It was uh, made, uh, fabricated from uh, uh, Empress Emax glass ceramic material, and here after cementation. Uh, it looks like a natural tooth. And this is how it looks on the IOPA X-ray. And this is before and this is after intraoral X, uh, picture. And here we have another X-ray, uh, another uh, sorry, another case for restoring uh, endotreated tooth for six with endocrine for 36 year old patient. This is the tooth um, of three six was endotreated and uh, it was indicated for endocrine. And here we use the the burr uh, burr to prepare the guide grooves uh, guiding grooves to in order to prepare the occlusal surface of the apartment. Then here we use this kind of burr. It looks like a wheel burr to prepare the sidewalk or the cervical sidewalk or the putt joint. And this is how it looks after the preparation. Uh, the sidewalk, cervical, all the provision has been already polished uh, and uh, finished. Impression has been taken using the double impression technique uh, with the putty and light body, additional silicone material. And this is the crown, endocrown has been fabricated on the working cast. And here it's already cemented in the mouth, uh, on the apartment itself. Restoring uh, uh, endotreated tooth 17 with endocrine for 27 year old patient. Uh, this is a tooth 17. This tooth 17 uh, indicated for endocrine. Uh, preparation has been done. Here we are using the prop, some sort of a prop to check the, the depth of the. Uh, of the bulb chamber should be uh, not less than 3 mm. 
And here we are checking the thickness of the cervical sidewalk or the putt joint, which I said should be at least 2 mm. Here we can see that in this case, uh, it has a thickness of 3.3 mm, which, has, uh, which is very good actually. And this is after uh, uh, in the occlusion view. Uh, shade selection has been done, impression done, secondary impression using the double impression technique, uh, putty with a light body, additional silicone, sent to the lab, fabricate the crown, into crown, uh, we do the try-in of the crown here, occlusal view, uh, sorry, uh, buckle view and uh, uh, palatal view. And if you notice here that the crown actually it was uh, having a short clinical crown, the apartment. And here, uh, how it looks from the occlusal view. And these are the references. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I really appreciate your, <coughs> your, uh, your joining this uh, webinar. Uh, it was nice meeting you all and I uh, share my experience in this uh, webinar. Please, if you have any question, ask me. On, the, uh, on my YouTube channels or, or you can send me uh, to my personal email. Thank you very much and have a good day.